Hey, what's going on guys? Jake Ferdin Tech here back with another video and today we are continuing the series of building a DIY NAS server. This is actually going to be the final video of this series. Previously we rebuilt the NAS server inside the Fractal Design Define R6 to accommodate more hard drives in a larger RAID. And in this video we are going to be configuring that RAID and also attaching it to our network to complete the network attached storage system for this video series. So now that everything is done on the hardware side, we're gonna go back into our server via SSH and do some configuring inside of the terminal and finish this build out from the software side. So with that being said, let's jump onto the desktop and get started. Alrighty guys, here we are in the overview page of cockpit. So, from this point on, we are going to configure the RAID and attach our RAID to the network. So that's the main steps that we're going to go through in this video. So we're going to go back up to storage. I'm going to go to devices where this drop down is and create a RAID device. And I'm going to select the disks that I want to use. And we are going to use RAID 5. So that was selected by default, but you have other options here too, where you have RAID 1, and you just want to mirror a couple drives, and all the way up to RAID 10, that has a stripe of different mirrors, so that's for a very big RAID array. And I'm going to name this RAID device the same thing, so I'm going to go JVT underscore RAID. So that looks good. I'm just going to click create and we'll let the magic happen. Okay guys, after quite some time our raid has been configured. If we take a look up here we no longer have that loading wheel or the spinning wheel for the progress that it is to configure the raid. And if we click on here all our drives are in sync. So this all looks really good. Unfortunately, the process to configure the RAID for the first time is really long. I thought I had a quicker way around it, but I don't remember what I did on one of my server builds to speed up the process, but I let this one just run overnight and sync all the drives. So the next step to do is to mount the RAID in a particular directory of our server. So right now I don't really have a place offhand that I would put it. So we're going to go into the terminal and make a directory in the root folder. So right now we should be somewhere in our home directory. So I'm just going to go cd dot dot. So that's home. We'll go back and now we are in our root folder. I'm going to do ls dash a and get a list of the directories that we have inside of our root, which is mostly going to be just the operating system files and directories so for my previous builds I've had the best luck mounting it in the root directory but instead of mounting it into an existing folder I'm actually gonna make our own so we're gonna go sudo make directory which is abbreviated by mkdir and I'm gonna name this one raid in all caps and we'll do another ls-a, make sure it's in there. And as you can see, it is the first result when I do that. So awesome. Okay, guys, we created our directory. We're going to go back up to the storage tab in cockpit. And from storage, if you open back up the home menu, we'll click on our raid. And we'll click down here on our content. And this is where we want to mount our raid. So from here, this is the mount point and this is the relative file path to get to the mount point that you want to place your RAID configuration in. And it's just going to be forward slash RAID for my configuration. So we'll click apply. And we have our RAID amount and that all looks really good. A good way to check this if you have been following along with my videos on building a DIY NAS server. I also installed a desktop environment which is just the regular Ubuntu desktop environment 
you can actually log into your machine and go into the file directory and find that raid folder and make sure or find your folder your mount point and if you go in there and right click and click on the properties you can verify that it does have this amount or around that amount just to make sure that your raid went into the correct spot okay guys we got it mounted and i also did add a, another directory inside of our raid folder called network share which that's the one i'm going to try and attach to samba server so next we are going to install samba and get it configured so installing samba isn't too hard as long as you don't run into any connectivity issues when trying to install samba and re retrieving packages and stuff like that other than that it can be pretty simple so this is a little installation guide on ubuntu's website i'll be sure to link that in the description of this video as well but we're just going to kind of go through these steps and get samba installed so first things first they want you to run a sudo apt update we did earlier but just to be safe we're going to do that again And it looks like all of our packages are up to date. So the next thing we're going to do is sudo apt install samba. And this is looking good. So if you guys don't see any type of progress bar or anything like that. And you do get some text where it says could not retrieve files or could not retrieve packages stuff to that extent that does mean that it didn't install properly so make sure you see all this and we're going to double check our install because i have had it to where i've been able to find samba by using this command but i've still had issues where it didn't properly install so we're going to check that and this looks correct it'll give you a pretty lengthy directory of where samba is located and it's also on the ubuntu website as well so cool looks like it installed successfully from the clues that i've seen on here so next is all about setting up samba and making a directory for the samba share to sit and that is going to be the directory that is attached to the network that you can access from other devices and in our case since we are running a server with raid we want it to be in that folder so you want that raid folder to get shared on the network because that's our that's our raid so we're going to have a you know raid 5 redundancy where our data is backed up and it's the most plentiful amount of storage I have in this system. Same thing for you guys, you guys are building the server. This is where the concept of RAID and the network attached storage concept kind of connect. So in here, from the Samba installation guide, they make a directory inside their home directory and their, their current user. And then they named it Samba Share. I wouldn't recommend naming your your Samba Share directory Samba Share because I've had some issues with the names kind of conflicting. It'll know it's a Samba Share wherever you put it. It'll know that by the SMB config file, which we'll get to in this moment. So we actually already did this step. Mine is going to be inside my root directory. Well, not inside the root directory, but my raid folder inside the root directory. And then inside the raid folder, I have a, another folder called network share. And that's going to be the one that I'm going to attach to the network. So from there, we want to configure that. So we're going to run this line here, which is going to give us a config file. And this is it. So if we scroll through here, this is a lot of uh, Samba kind of documentation and notes along with some code to get this attached to the network if we scroll down to the bottom we're going to want to add our samba share right in here 
and this guide actually shows you kind of how to do that so we're just going to copy and paste this and here's where that name comes in too, Samba Share. So I think this is where it can tend to conflict or where I've had issues with it conflicting. So I'm going to copy this. We're going to place it down here. And I'm going to get rid of some of these spaces because sometimes these files can be a little bit finicky. And this isn't the, we're not going to be using the same path as the Ubuntu guide. We're not even in our home directory, so we're gonna go. It's in our root, so we're gonna go raid slash, and then I want it inside that network share folder. And make sure you get your spelling correct and your casing correct. And of course, too, to double check, you can always go to your box itself or back in the terminal and check the file path of where you want to place this. So that looks correct. I think this is good. So I'm going to hit control X to um, exit. It's going to ask us if we want to save and then I'm going to press the Y key and I'm going to hit enter and it'll bring us back to our terminal. So once that's done, it's best practice to restart the service now that we have messed with the config file. So this is the uh, the line to restart the Samba service. So I'm going to go ahead, we're going to go in there and do that. And we have to update our firewall rules on our Linux server to allow Samba's traffic. So we're going to copy that as well, paste it and run that. And you should see rules updated to version 6. So that looks correct from other installs that I've done. And now we're on the last step. Now it is count configuration. So Samba does require you to make a password. So what I'm going to I always make the Samba credentials the same as my login to my server. I don't know if that's best practice or not. I don't think it's bad from a security standpoint, even though it's the same. And I think even they recommend it as well. So we're going to go ahead and paste uh, sudo smb password dash a. And then I'm going to use my username, which is JVT admin. Now it's going to say set a new password for Samba and it says the user has been added. So that looks good. So that's the last step from the server. Now it's just time to connect to from another device. So there's different ways to actually find your Samba share. And it'll show you how to connect to it, whether you're trying to connect from another Linux device or if you're trying to connect from Mac OS device or which here's what we'll be doing is a Windows device. So basically, you're going to want to go into your network and sharing and you're going to want to make sure that you do have network and sharing turned on so you can see some devices on the network and you just want to go in and type out this information minus the IP address part. You're gonna type in your IP address and then Samba share, click enter, and it should prompt you to type in the credentials for that particular Samba share, which we just set up. So once we have all that configuration done, I'm actually gonna go ahead and reboot the system just to make sure all those configuration changes that we made go into effect. Okay guys, once your system is rebooted, you should be able to go into the networking tab of your file explorer. And in the search bar, you should be able to type in your IP address with a backslash and Samba share. Like I mentioned, I've done a few of these builds and this one has kind of given me some issues. So Windows wasn't able to access the IP address and Samba share that I provided. There are a couple ways to attempt to fix this. One is going into the credential manager of Windows and inputting the information on the location that you're trying to access. 
So the information that you'll input is the IP address and the username for that system and the password for that system. And once I input that information, I was able to get into our Samba share. But they came with one other issue, is when I tried to drop a basic PNG file to test the server, it wouldn't allow us to do that. So from this point, it looks like we had read permissions, but we did not have any permissions to write and create files and folders inside of our NAS storage system. A couple fixes for this is to either log in as your root user and turn the access to read and write for that particular folder but root has given me a lot of issues with these ubuntu servers lately trying to log in to the desktop as root hasn't really worked out for me so another way around this that i found is by sshing back into our server as our standard user and handing off that file folder to our standard user instead of root and this can be done by the command the sudo chone r and then you use your username you want to hand that folder off to and then the file path to the folder or directory you want to pass on to the other user. From there I handle this graphically. I go back into my standard user. I go find that particular directory and right click the properties and make sure that read and write is enabled for other users. Alrighty, that is it for this video guys and for this particular series. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Got some good insight on a particular path to create your own DIY network attached storage system with RAID. I've been wanting to make a system like this for quite a while to store all my YouTube videos and make sure that I have a good automated backup system via a RAID configuration. So this is going to be much easier having RAID handle all of my backups and stuff opposed to me backing it up to multiple external USB hard drives. And this is much easier having the storage system attached to the network as if I'm working on a video project and need to grab some clips from older projects, I can do so much easier than plugging in a certain drive and searching for the drive that has the video I'm looking for. There are many ways to accomplish building or purchasing a network attached storage solution many different operating systems you can use i'm a big fan of this particular configuration given that it's pretty simple in a sense that we have ubuntu server installed on our system and we're basically just running services off of that to control and manage our server and given that we have a complete operating system in this case ubuntu server 20.04 we have a very wide range of different apps and services we can install along with how we are going to manage this server and do what we need to do with it. From a hardware standpoint, we have really good performance compared to what can be purchased as far as kind of an entry level NAS like from Synology or other companies like that. And since we did a software RAID configuration, we're not dealing with any type of server equipment like RAID cards and SAS cables and stuff like that that makes things a little bit trickier and trying to configure the RAID cards can be also a little bit tricky. Having all these drives connected through SATA makes life pretty easy. And now that our system is built in a mid-tower ATX case, we have lots of room to scale up if we ever want to add more drives to our RAID or create a separate RAID. We got plenty of room for more drives. So that's it for this video guys. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful or learned something, make sure to drop a like on it. And if you want to see more tech related videos like this one, be sure to subscribe. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.